Greg Vortic, we are rejoined. I, I was caught with my glasses, folks. I thought I had them off, but I didn't. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about Brian Mattis last night. What did you see, Mike, from him over last night's performance versus the three previous? Well, the key for Brian Mattis has been his fastball command. And last night, I think establishing that fastball early inside set up so many pitches for him. He, he had pretty much pinpoint accuracy, sets up his breaking ball, sets up his changeup. But being able to locate that fastball is, is a huge key for him, and he was able to keep that confidence, stay out of trouble, and have a really gutsy, strong performance, and hopefully he's well on his way to a successful year now. And when you look at the number six innings, no earned runs, although there were two runs given up, four base hits. Rick, was it his best performance in a long, long time? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, mentally, you could see that uh, as the game went on, he started to gain a lot more confidence. And I think really came from being able to, you know, to get a few pitches by the hitters without much trouble. Strikeouts for him, he only had three of them on the night, but two of them started off an inning. But his big strikeout came in the sixth inning, and it came right after a base hit and, and right in between a walk at the same time. But you saw that strikeout with Brett Lowry. That was a, a you know, went all the way to three and two. And to get a strikeout in that situation with the kind of pitch that he made, really was a big confidence builder with him. I know the skipper wanted to get him out of there at that point because he was pretty successful and you needed to build his confidence. I think he's going to be fine as the season goes along because all we got to do is play good defense behind him. You know how important that is, Bordy. You did great <laughs> defense behind all your pitching. They love you out there. When the defense starts really getting solid, they realize you're going to take outs away for them. Well, there's no doubt about it. I'll tell you what, a key, a, to me, a huge key for that game was First inning walk, first batter of the game, he walks better, gets a double play ball, boom. You can see that weight lifted off his shoulder, settled yep. down, and threw a great game. I want to go back and talk a little bit about infield defense. Now, you may recall in last night's game in the uh, seventh inning, Birds are down 2-1 now. Nick Markakis gets a double, and then Adam Jones comes up. The play was an error on the back end of it, but a base hit. Let's talk a little bit about how you would mentally approach that play in the game situation last night when Jones was hitting. Well, as a base runner? At second no, base? as a defender, like you at shortstop. Well, as a, as a shortstop, obviously the ball's in the hole, but you see Nick Markakis break on this play. Here's Jonesy right here hitting that ground ball in the hole, and that's Escobar goes over in the hole. Brett Lowry vacates third base. Nick Markakis has a great read there and takes off the third, and Escobar tries to make that rush throw to first, throws it away, and Markakis is allowed to score. See, Adam Jones is a fast base runner, too. You hit that ball deep in the hole, you may have to eat that ball and just run over to third, you know, to try to prevent him, or at least to keep that double play in order anyway. So, you know, it was a young mistake, I think, and uh, but great heads-up base running by Nick Markakis and able to score a run there. Is that a tough mental decision to make in that situation where the ball hit where it was and all, you know, do I eat it or do I throw it? Well, well, it is, but you have to, I mean, you have to make these split decisions out there in the middle of the field so many times, and that was a type of play just ranging so far to his right. He, he does have a great arm, and he can probably make that play pretty much routinely, but when Nick Markakis is heading over to third base, there's a little bit of confusion there with Lowry diving in front of him, Markakis taking off. Probably the best bet is just eat that ball and follow Markakis over to third, hoping he might round and be able to get him there. You know, the thing for me that really made the play was Adam Jones' hustle. When the shortstop sees that right about, yeah, he knows he can make that play because he's got a strong arm, but Adam Jones is hustling at the same time. He forces him to try to rush even more. That's where he throws the ball away, and it changed the whole play all around. Markakis scores, he gets in scoring position, and the whole game changes. One thing that Buck Showell just tried to do is use his roster as much as possible. Ryan Flaherty's getting a start tonight for the third uh, straight game. He started at third, then second, and back to third tonight defensively. He got his first uh, hit as an Oriole last night, a bunt, and he also had a sacrifice fly. Mike, what are you seeing from Ryan Flaherty so far defensively? Well, he's obviously so versatile. That's why he's on this ball club. He can play all the infield positions, some outfield positions. So the versatility is going to hopefully keep him in the lineup because a pretty exciting player. Great glove guy. He's a shortstop, signed as a shortstop, and learned how to play many different positions. But he's smart. He, he has great intelligence on the field. He's aware of what's going on around him. He will not make mental mistakes defensively. And uh, that's a big plus when you can pull somebody off the bench and count on him to play in a stretch like he's doing right now and trust that he's going to be, you know, help that team win. Just want to say one thing. About 3 o'clock this afternoon, this man was in uniform, throwing, <laughs> <laughs> playing. Going and, batting I mean, back. <laughs> it's unbelievable how much work you put in besides just doing the broadcast. Hey, why not, man? That's a lot of fun getting out there and throwing batting practice. And We're stuff getting our money's worth.
work. Now, you know how much money we pay this guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, a lot of money. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but his enthusiasm for the game, Mike Bordick, is just uh, unmatched, unbelievable. He'll be up in the booth with Gary shortly as the Orioles play the Oakland A's in the first number three game series.